everyone, my name is Maria Fox and I'm here to talk to you today about my Lumen journey and specifically how I've integrated good fats into my uh, diet, into the way that I eat and approach my food. So first of all, I just want to say that um, some time back I did a DNA test and in that DNA test it came back saying that I was uh, actually highly sensitive to carbohydrates, particularly refined carbohydrates. And also highly sensitive to fats and particularly saturated fats. So when I began the Lumen Plan, I was a little bit apprehensive about the fact that I was going on a high fat uh, approach, certainly until I was burning fat, carbs were low uh, and I was a little bit nervous around that. And also because I had done a low fat diet back in my early 40s and lost a lot of weight over probably an 18 month period so about I guess about four stone over 18 months now what has been quite remarkable with my lumen journey is that I've lost a couple of pounds between the end of August and the end of October so not very much at all I started with lumen probably about the last week of October so knowing what I did know about my DNA, I was thinking, well, this is going to be interesting. and But I just thought I'm going to suck it and see and go with it. Now, what's been interesting has been the fact that over that period of time, I have lost another £45. So I've lost £47 in total, 45 using Lumen. And being initially a bit apprehensive about the fat, I just want to say I'm not apprehensive at all about fats now. I have a better understanding of how they work in the body. Um, and I have tried to um, not eat too much saturated fat. So I do have set a kind of limit in my fitness power, which is lower than the average person. And some days I stick to it and some days I go over it. But I try and keep to a healthy um healthy fats and I try and stick with good fats so with all that in mind um, I just want to say at the beginning I was a bit like well what am I going to eat for fats you know they talk about olive oil well yeah I have that in my diet but you don't eat olive oil meat although I know people that sometimes will stick olive oil in a protein shake um, so I, I've used olive oil fairly liberally um, and I would say that I've also eaten um, quite a number of different seeds and nuts and that's really for me been quite key I've also used coconut oil in my cooking so I make a keto what I call keto pound cake and I have shared that recipe on the Lumen Facebook group so if you look it up I think if you search under my name and put in keto pound cake it will probably come up that's made with coconut oil it's made with almond flour and it's made with butter think and uh, it's made with fat basically fat and uh, good carbs so um, so having been scared of fat I am no longer scared of fat and I would say that the key fats that I have every single day are chia seeds and you might say well there's not that much fat in chia seeds well there's 4.6 grams in a 15 gram serving. I tend to have 20 grams of these every day. So they're, they're, a, good, they're a good fat. But they're not going to get you to the top, are, you? are, they, are they, of the target? I have uh, obviously used the protein sources that I've got good fats in and have got fats in, steak and lamb and, and oily fish. They've all got fats in. And then I also have flaxseed. That's another natural form. That's good fat. I have these special natural mixed nuts, not huge, massive quantities. I tend to stick to about 30 grams, but I incorporate them in the diet. I also eat pumpkin seed, another little snack. And then I've got some really naughty snacks. Well, I call them naughty snacks, but they're actually healthy snacks. So I've just invested in this keto deluxe mix, which has... Blends of almonds, walnuts, dried cheddar cheese, pepitas, reduced sugar cranberries and pistachios. And in a serving of this, you get 14 grams of good fat. You get 680 milligrams of omega-3, 175 calories in total. And there's only 1.96, uh, sorry, 1.9 grams of sugar, which is going to be the 
reduced uh, sugar crumbers. So they're, they're quite a naughty fat snack. But these, now there is one problem with these. These dark chocolate keto nuggets, pecans, almonds, and hemp seeds covered in this really delicious dark chocolate. Yeah, chocolate, chocolate on this eating plan. Now these are lovely, again, gluten-free, all healthy. All these things are gluten-free that I'm sharing because actually I've just started gluten-free. But these have got nine grams of healthy fat in on a tw 20 gram serving. Now, all I'd say is, uh, so they've got in them, in a 20 gram serving, you've got that nine grams of fat. You've only got three grams of net carb. So again, really low carb snack. Um, the only thing I'll say is, I think they're a bit moorish, if I'm honest. So um, once you start on them, you've really got to be disciplined. You need to weigh your 20 grams and have 20 grams. Otherwise, you could have to eat more. And then my other most favouritest snack that I have most days now, it's like my chocolate fix, are these keto bombs. Now, you can get these in Costco. In fact, those are the ones that I shared there, Costco. Um, these have got in them less than a gram of net carbs. And they've got, where does it say it? Oh, here we go. Coconut oil, MCTs, that's um, those good healthy fats. And the other thing that's really amazing with these is, what about this? They've got seven grams of fiber. I think it's seven grams of fiber per little keto bomb. So they're small circular keto bombs and they're delicious. They are absolutely delicious. And there's no bad sugar in these either. Um, there's only 70 calories in each one. So it is enough to give you a bit of a chocolate fix if you like chocolate and you like chocolate. So they're my favorite snacks. Um, so those are some of the things that are out there that you might not have thought about in terms of getting your fat content. The other key things with fat are things like avocado. Obviously, you'll get fat in cheese as well, but you're getting protein in that too. But you don't want too much because you don't want to raise your bad cholesterol and saturated fat will, will do that. Um, but all I'll say is there are ways of getting the good fats into your diet. Um, and there's no need to be scared of them. I definitely was scared of fat. And I think that's because we've all bought into culturally a society where we've been taught that fat is bad and that actually eating fats make us fat. But that actually isn't true. What, what makes us overweight is eating more than we're using. It's number one. Um, but obviously there are other factors in that, and I explained that in my introduction video for Lumen, new users for Lumen. It isn't just about calories in, calories out. There's a whole other thing going on with our hormone system, with how we respond to different foods, to our genetic predisposition, to what type of exercise we do, to how active we are. And we're all absolutely incredibly unique, as my DNA test uh, showed me, uh, you know, I've got a low metabolic response. I've got the stress-related obesity gene. But just because my genetic predisposition is one thing doesn't mean that my genetic expression has to follow the predisposition. That's also something that's very worth saying. So although, although my genetic predisposition says I should have a larger waist and I'm not likely to ever be thin, persistent thinness, that doesn't mean that I can't be slim. That doesn't mean I can't be the right body mass index. It doesn't mean I can't have lean muscle mass. Um, and so with all of these things, you have to do your research. And I guess as I've gone along this journey, you know, I didn't know anything about some of these things. I found these as I've gone along. I've researched online, Google, 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 good fats, and find ways of integrating those good fats into your diet, coconut oil, olive oil, all of those uh, good oils, that they're, they're good ways of integrating them into your diet. Finding protein sources that are good, that have healthy fat in them. And um, finding fats that, that work for you. Olives, they're another, um, they're another thing that you can you can eat. I don't like avocado very much, but I am really trying to force myself to like it because it is so good for us and so 
it's got so much in it that's that's good um, but there's so many seeds as well and I would just encourage you to explore to research and to use Dr Google to find out what's going to work for you and then once you've worked that out it then becomes a lot easier you know I add some of the seeds to my protein shakes most days I have a sweet snack in the evening because actually I'm trying to not eat carbs past 6 30 7 o'clock in the evening and so that means that if I am going to have a snack later on it's going to be fat or it's going to be protein or it's going to be a mixture of the two um, but that means that you generally will go to bed and switch into fat burning a lot quicker so I would just encourage you to uh, to do the research and to find some of these different sources for fats and enjoy them I can't believe it. I was like, oh, these are so good. Uh, but that doesn't mean overeat them. Clearly, you want to stay within your macro allowance for the day. But it's great being able to actually make room for good fats in your diet. So I'm going to sign out. I hope that's been helpful. Again, leave any comments, any questions. Please subscribe to my channel. I am going to be doing more health and well-being stuff. I'm going to do some stuff around fitness and how our activity levels affect our lumen levels and what our body chooses to use for energy sometime this week because I've had a very interesting week in terms of my training and exercise. So have a great day.